two preliminary details you'll need to have in order. One of them will be a full set of construction documents that you plan on using, designed by an architect or an engineer. You'll also need to know the soil characteristics of your site if you're doing any foundation work with your columns. Be sure to check with local building codes before you start. For our project here, we have our rebar reinforcement ready. We have ready concrete mix. Enough water to mix it. Remember, you'll need one gallon of water per 60-pound bag of concrete. We've also got our tools ready. Now I've got some gloves here, a trowel for finishing, something to mix the concrete with, a pencil and the blade for preparing our form. And of course, it's all going to happen in a concrete mixing tray. And last but not least, we have our concrete form trimmed and ready to go. lightweight and economic way to form your column job. Now this tube started off as an eight foot long member and I simply took a box cutter and um, after penciling the length that I desired just made a cut all the way around. They're super easy to trim and drill on site so for any more complex columns that you need to make this can still be an option for you. Um, they're also heat resistant and uh, water resistant up to an extent. Now you can get them coated in plastic so that you can set them one day, um, they can withstand the dew and even a rain within the next time frame that you'd be able to pour your columns if you're waiting on a concrete shipment or if you simply run out of time in one afternoon to set and pour in the same time frame. You can set it, come back the next day, it'll be ready for you. Um, these are incredibly easy also to set up, so you don't, you need minimal bracing, you don't need more than one person to set them, uh, and even for really tall jobs that require columns of upwards of 20 feet, um, you won't even really need a crane to set the forms up. So this is a great way to save money on your column job, and because they're made of 100% recycled paperboard and themselves recyclable, all you do when you're done with them is break out your, your blade again, slice them, take them off of your column, and toss them right in the recycling bin. So over here, we've got our footing already set up. It's complete with embedded rebar for support, and we've got our sauna tube uh, column form already set here. It, uh, you literally just have to slide it over your rebar and it's ready to go. So that being said, let's go ahead and form our column. It's been three days, so although our concrete isn't fully cured yet, we'll need to remove our sauna tube cardboard form. And although it's three days for sauna tubes before they need to be removed, it may be different for different manufacturers. So just double check on that to make sure uh, so you don't have your cardboard form permanently adhered to your column. Now all that we'll need to do this is again take out our box cutter, and just like we cut around the specific length that we needed, um, just make a single cut down the side of it. Now I've already done that in the back here, so I can't wait. Let's see what our column looks like. Wow, great. Got a nice smooth finish here. And uh, as you can see, there's a slight diagonal line running uh, down the length of the column. Now that's from 
the spiral pattern that sauna tubes are man manufactured in. And they're laminated on the inside so that you don't need to apply any removal agent, but whenever you take them off, you will have this um, spiraled finish. Now, for our purposes, that's fine, but if you're working with an interior column job or a site that's a little bit more finished than what we've got here, you'll want to either uh, then cover this in a wire lab and put a, a layer of cement over it, or invest in the finish free variety of sauna tubes, which really don't cost very much more than the regular kind we have here. So, uh, like we said, these are recyclable once you remove them, but don't toss them in the recycling bin right away because since you'll need to remove your form in three days after you pour your concrete, I'm sure that it won't be at the exact time that you need to close out your project. So, whether it's finished or not, just to make sure that nothing gets scratched or chipped off, you'll want to keep this guy to cover your column back up, like so. Maybe secure it with a few pieces of tape uh, down here, and uh, you'll want to keep it covered until you're ready to close out your project, but your column is ready to go.